The rope vector lab begins by splitting the class in half. While we are upstairs, we count off by twos. One, two, one, two. Group one, when we've gone outside, will form the x-axis. They will stand along this rope. Group two will form the y-axis. They will extend along this rope. The class leader stands at the intersection of the two ropes. A box must be formed that is large enough for the leader to stand in. They're the only member of the class that walks in a different direction from the rest of the class. They take a diagonal path during the entire lab. Please be careful when using the tape measures. Please do not step on them when they are on the ground. For this reason, the person that is assigned the responsibility for taking care of the tape measure should keep it in their hand and not leave it on the ground. Note that they are measured in two scales, in feet and inches, and in metrics, this is the side we will use, in meters, centimeters, and millimeters. Please note that the zero mark is not at the end of the tape measure. The zero mark is quite a distance from the edge of the tape. Please make sure you begin at the zero. The meter sticks mark the origin or the point at which our graph began. Be careful not to step on the meter sticks and break them. Leave them where they are. This will help us to be a frame of reference or a measuring point at the end of the lab. Group 1 moves vertically starting on the x-axis. For trial 1, Group 1 will be taking heel-to-toe steps. They will not move their foot unless the leader counts. For example, when the leader says 1, they will take a step. When the leader says two, take a step. When the leader says three, take a step. Four, five, do not move unless the leader counts. Group two moves horizontally starting on the y-axis. For trial one, Group 2 will be taking regular steps. They too will not move until the leader counts. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on up to 25. When the leader says stop, the entire class ceases, stops exactly where they are, and puts the ropes down. Since the ropes are crossed when the lab begins, both groups need to be aware of the fact that at some point or another during the lab, the rope will pass over your head. Please be careful as passing the rope over class members' heads. The class leader stays in this box that is formed by the juncture of the X and Y or group one and group two ropes. As they move forward, they will be tracing a diagonal path. They are the only member of the class that will be moving in that fashion. For the benefit of this video, you will not see the box. The leader will count off and the class will take a step at each count. One two, three, four, five. At this point, the leader should drop a marker. The markers will not be blown by the wind and will mark the diagonal or resultant. Continue counting. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Drop another marker. Keep going. Eleven, twelve, 13, 14, 15, drop another marker. Continue dropping markers until you get to 25. At 25, the leader calls stop. The entire class immediately stops 
they put the ropes down exactly where they are. If the ropes do not meet with the markers, this is fine. Place the ropes down exactly where the class is. When done, take a look at where the markers lie. They should be in a diagonal path marking the resultant of our lab. This resultant should be the resultant of our rectangle. To read the measuring tape correctly, first make sure that it is on the meter side. Find the metered markers. They are denoted in red. So I've got seven meters This looks like 7.88 meters because I see the number 80, so that would be 7.8 meters, and then the additional 8 comes from lying on the line here. Choose a scale such as 1 centimeter equals 2 meters. Draw the x and y vectors to scale. Do not simply draw in the hypotenuse. You must use the measured distance from the field. Include arrowheads. Remember to draw exactly what occurred on the field. If your group happened to stop before or after the leader counted to 25 seconds, your resultant may include a straight line and a dashed portion to denote this discrepancy. The hypotenuse must intersect the x and y components. You will have two resultant speeds. One will be measured on the field. The other will be obtained using a squared plus b squared equals c squared using the horizontal speed as a, the vertical speed as b. Use both to calculate percent error.